the channel, my name is Abel, we're back with a brand new series on Football Manager 2020, starting it for real this time after a bit of a preview in the last video. This is the promotion project, and it's a journeyman, Dave. First time I've ever doing one of these. For the first time, we're not going to be limiting ourselves to one club during a series. We're going to be at multiple clubs, and the goal is we're going to try and get as many promotions as we can in the time that we've got. So this will, unless something disastrous happens with a save file, run until the end of Epon 20. So if that interests you, if you like the sound of what you hear, then drop a like so I know you're interested. Leave comments, and if you haven't learned to already, or if you're new, do consider subscribing and turning on notifications. So the idea behind this is that we're going to set ourselves at a, probably a second division side, and try and get promotion after promotion, uh, move clubs if we get promotion, because if we're in the top league, I don't think we're going to try and stay up, uh, and then just go for another team and go for another promotion. If we get sacked, of course, we'll have to look for another club as well. So so that's the limits I'm imposing myself about moving clubs, is that I can only move once I've won a promotion with the side or unless they sack me. So if we get to a top league with a team, then it's time for me to move. And the other um, caveat that I'm imposing on myself is that I can't manage in nations that I've managed before. This might change during the course of the series. I might sort of start adding stuff that I've done before. But for now, England, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Belgium are going to be off cards. So we're not going to be managing in those. I don't have those leagues turned on. So uh, that might change. I might add them um, down the line to try and get some different teams in there. But for now, we're going to be leaving those guys out. Just because I've managed there before. I want to use this to try and go to some nations that I've never managed before. So Netherlands, Portugal, Scotland, Russia, places like that. So you can see here, we've got 20 nations loaded. We've got Austria, Bulgaria, Croatia, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Finland, Greece, Netherlands, Hungary, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Russia, Scotland, Serbia, Sweden, Switzerland, Turkey, and Ukraine. I haven't got every single nation. People like Belarus aren't here, Israel, um, the other home nations, Wales and Ireland and Northern Ireland. So not every country is in here because otherwise I think the game is going to be super slow. Scotland, I've got three leagues. Uh, I've got rid of the second division in Denmark. We're just going to go with the second tier and the first tier for Denmark. But this is what we're looking at. England and all the other nations that I mentioned aren't going to be in this. Uh, we could find ourselves in Scotland. But um, instead of starting with a specific team, which is what I was going to go with previously... Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna let fate decide and just see what sort of job we can get just because I couldn't really pick a team It was difficult to find one that I was really set on actually managing So instead we are gonna just see what we get given. This is my manager now in terms of my reputation The guys that I've sort of modeled this save on are Neil Warnock, which you saw in the previous video um, Very good at getting promotions and the other guy is Vitor Oliveira who's a Portuguese manager who got 11 promotions in his managerial career and they're both, they were both professional footballers in their time. Um, didn't have a, sp a spectacular career at their clubs, but they were a pro footballer, um, I'd say at a national level. So that's why we've set ourselves there. And in terms of our coaching badges, I've given myself the lowest license I can. So we're not starting with no coaching badges, but we've just got a national C license. So we'll see what we can get. So our reputation at the moment, it's just one star. Uh, and hopefully that will see us get um, a, a job a decent job, hopefully. In terms of our attributes, I've gone with a taskmaster style, uh, and I've also I've moved the slider once towards tracksuit management. So we're going to be a bit more of a mental manager, uh, fitness and mental. In terms of like the coaching attributes, um, we should hopefully have some scouts and coaches to deal with other, other stuff. Hence why player knowledge is only at five as well. And then we've got adaptability at ten. So we've got hopefully a little bit of. Um, leeway and moving around same with determination as well trying to get away with the ward and then the discipline of our players and motivation i think we've got the main basis covered with that but we're a brand new manager at 28 years old i'm 29 now so that makes me feel a little bit better, better at least so let's have a look at what jobs are available at the moment i started this in may of 2019 so we're actually starting with the start of the bulgarian pre-season just because hopefully that will give us a bit more time to maybe get some jobs and see some different jobs come in as well. Because if you're starting unemployed, or you're starting like June, you're probably going to see the same sort of jobs come up. So I'd like to see a little bit of uh, variety. But that's the only thinking behind that. It might give us a bit more time to maybe find some extra jobs. So if we filter out all of the non-manager jobs and we go with just club management. Now, of course, there's no point going for a team in the top division. We won't need to go there. So Elviv, Hearts, not going to be managing in those. So let's go through these and let's see what jumps out. And I think we'll apply for them and then we'll decide, you know, if we get an interview, we'll go through it and then we'll make a decision 
on where we're going to be. But I think we want to try and start fairly high and not start sort of with like an amateur side that have no money. We need to really look at what we're dealing with. All right, so we'll go um, alphabetically in terms of the nation. So starting off with the Bulgaria, we've got Pirin Blagovgrad. Now, I'm English. I'm going to get spelling and pronunciation wrong. I absolutely am. So these guys... Um, the manager is still there. It must be a caretaker manager. They're a professional team in the Bulgarian Second League. They are just finished 13th after being relegated the season before. They're paying their players some money at the very least. Orziek in the Croatian First Division. Now, is this the top league in Croatia or is it the second one? No, this is the top league, so we can't go there. Mijlanda in the Danish Super League, so that's out of the question. Vivi Venlo in the Eredivisie, uh, out of the question. Uh, we've got some Hungarian sides. We've got three teams in the second division, one in the first division. But again, is this the top league? No, it's not because Fer and Chavros are there. So we've got three possible teams here. We've got Haladas, uh, our professional, also two stars. Uh, 12th place finish in the first division, so they've just been relegated. Media prediction for the second division is fifth. We can have a look at that, actually. What are the media predictions? Season preview. We've got this side, which I'm going to struggle to pronounce. Niregyaza. Nier Media prediction of 11th, so that's not really what we would want. And then the other one was Tijakshi, which sounds like I've just sneezed. And they're predicted 14th. So these guys, we want to try and avoid them really because we want to at least try and find a club that's, you know, aiming for a promotion at the least. These guys are just trying to stay up at this point. Uh, we've got one Polish side, Odra Opole, also professional. And again, their players are at least on contract. So these guys all seem professional. It looks like we've got no, like... um. No semi-pro ones, at least. Um, they've just been relegated from the Superliga. Uh, media prediction of 11th again. Oh, no, the first division is not the Superliga, is it? So that's not really what we want. We might have to make do with it, though. We've got two Portuguese Premier League sides there, so we won't be going there. We've got Deco Getica in the Romanian leagues. We've got Falkirk in Labrooks League 1. That could be a possibility. Um, so that's the third tier, isn't it? Because, yeah, you've got the Labrox Championship. So, Falkirk could be a possibility. Uh, they were relegated from the Labrox Championship. And they're predicted to get back up there. So, Scotland could be a possibility. We don't have to keep ourselves in one nation. We can move abroad if we want to. But, Falkirk could be one to go for. We could find ourselves in Scotland. We've got Troyal in the Serbian First Division. Um, is this the top flight? It's not. So, that could be somewhere to look at. They're predicted 7th. Uh, Sweden, you've got Trelleborgs, they're predicted 10th. Uh, we've got Turkey, we've got Fatih Kamagumru. Fourth place prediction in the first league, so they might have a good chance of maybe getting up to the to the Superliga in Turkey. Uh, and then we've got a team in the Ukrainian first league, Metalurg Zaporizhia. Why do you need Z8, Z8? Is that a, is that a spelling mistake? Is that in there twice? We're looking at Falkirk. That would be the job that I'd want, actually. I know it's a tier below, but Labrooks lead one, League One, compared to some of these other second divisions, hope maybe like a bit sort of similar level. Who knows? So Labrooks League One are the 93rd best league, apparently. So it's behind like you've got the Hungarian division there. But yeah, it's probably the lowest league there, but at least it'll give us a good chance of getting up. And then Falkirk that not that long ago. We're in the um the Scottish Premier League, I'm sure. See, about 10 years ago, 2010, they were in the Labrooks Premiership. So hopefully it won't take too much to get them back up there. I mean, they did well in the Championship for a while, but they just had a couple of bad seasons of 8th and 10th recently. So I'm not quite sure what's happened with Falkirk. Facilities are pretty good. Um, good training facilities, good youth facilities. Um, no junior coaching, but I don't think we're going to be around very long for that. So that's not too bad. No youth recruitment. So in terms of youth players... They haven't really got much, but in terms of actual training and stuff, they look pretty good. So that might be a possibility. And I'm just going to apply it all, and then we can just ignore the Premier League jobs, and we'll see uh, what happens. So all the applications have been received. None of them have been dismissed just yet. I mean, there might be other jobs that come up. So the AIK jobs in Secure, but that's in the Premier League division, so we can't really go for that. But if other jobs come up, then we can go for those as well. Um, and we'll see if we start getting some interviews and stuff like that. Okay, so, so far, I think all but one of these sides have given us a job interview. So we'll go through those and then we'll see where we go from there. Of course, we're going to ignore the ones in the Premier Division, so the two Portuguese sides, so Avis and uh, Maritimo. All right, because I don't do a lot of interviews on this channel, 
We're going to go through one now. So this is the interview for Pirim Glavigrad, the Bulgarian side. We're going to go through these just because I don't think I've ever shown an interview on this channel because see, my saves have all been with one team. We've had very few interviews over over our time. Like I have been to some, but I've never shown them because I haven't needed to. Like The only reason I've ever gone for interviews before is just to see if it would affect like what happens with the board or not, if they try and get me like a new contract or something. So I haven't really done that too many, but let's have a look. So Eva Roran is the owner, and let's see, starting off with, how would you overcome the relatively big obstacle of not speaking the language? Football is a universal language. Explain why you're in the running for a few jobs. I'm considering my options. We part a company with our last manager sooner than anyone would have anticipated. Can you offer assurances that we won't be in for a repeat of that? Not really. This is a journeyman. This may be one season and that's it. Uh, I want short-term success. Let's go. The club is looking to hire a manager comfortable working with limited resources. Are you that manager? Uh, play football and then everything will sort itself out. How would you feel about working with our current director of football? Uh, depends what he's like. As part of the recruitment process, we're willing to allow you to request changes to our backroom staff setup. What size budget would we be looking for to make these changes? Uh, well, they've got no scouts. They've got a couple of coaches, one for the youth team. Got a player coach. I'd like the budget to be in place to make a fair amount of changes, I think. Uh, long-term vision. We don't need long-term vision because uh, we're not going to be here very long, I don't think. But I'm going to agree with that. Should you be high? The expectation is for the club to finish in the top half of the table. Is that fair? Or do you think you can improve upon that? Um, yeah, we can do that. Hopefully we'll get more, though. Not going to request anything right now. But that's it. That's an interview. We've got, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more. So we'll go through those and then we'll see if anything else comes up. We'll probably simulate like maybe a couple of weeks, a few weeks uh, if we don't get anything from these, but we'll have to wait and see. See, most of these interviews are going to be the same questions. They might throw an odd one in sometimes, but for the most part, these are going to be exactly the same interviews and just try and pick in the same answers. It's been a very long time since I've found myself in a job centre. It's been a very, very long time. Um, but we have got lots of offers, it seems, from um, almost all the clubs that we've had interviews with. So that's at least good. Uh, but I think we do want to try and see if we get some more. Um, that's backroom staff changes. So we've got, what's that, seven job offers. I'm going to see if I can delay these for a bit because, say, it's only been a few days into the save and we've got job offers already. So I do want to try and at least get a few more options in there before we accept any offers. Hopefully they will agree to these delays. And they all have, so that's good at least. Um, let's very quickly... I know last time we talked about Neil Warnock, but let's have a look at Vitor Oliveira. Now, I was going to do a separate video for him, but it would have just been me talking because uh, there's not a lot of actual footage of him. There's a few photos of him on Google Images, but there's not all else other than that. So this is Vitor Oliveira. And at the moment, he's managing Gil Vicente. Uh, he stayed in Portugal his whole career. His football like playing career was... It was all right. Like He played for a few clubs, mainly in the Premier League, but he did have a few... Um, years in the second division in the sort of late 1970s but 218 league appearances 17 goals i'm not can't remember where exactly he played i think he was a central midfielder uh, but when he was at portimonense uh, he was their player manager so if we have a look at his milestones here we go so he was the player manager in uh, 1985 he was there for a couple of years uh, and then went to maya and then he got his first promotion with Passos de Ferreira. And that was winners of the Portuguese Second League. So that was his first promotion. That was in 1991. And then he almost immediately moved to Echil uh, Didn't do too well there, but was there for three years. Then he went to Guimarães. Uh, again, not for very long at all. Uh, then went to Academica, where he got his next promotion, finishing third place uh, in 97. Then he won promotion with Leira in 1998. Uh, and then his next one was 99 with Belenenses. Uh, and then he was at Rio Ave. Then was Gil Vicente, then Academica, then Morense. Then he won a uh, promotion with Les Choice in 2007. Then Les Choice for a bit. Then Trofense for a bit. Look at all these like short managerial times he had. Like July to February. That 08, 09 one, just over a year. You've got Aves there. Got a, a promotion with Arusa, runners up in the Portuguese Second League. That was in uh, 2013. And then he left straight away. Then he was promoted with Moro Rense, and this was where he had like five in a row. He won five promotions in a row. You can see him there. And then there were like six, before, there was a few before that as well. I think that was his fifth in a row, and that was his 11th. And then he won another one recently with Passos de Ferreira. So that might be 12 promotions, you know, but you can see him there. 18, 17, 16, 
15, 14, and 13. Six in a row. And then you've got Les Shoyos, you've got Belenenses, Liria, Academica, Ferreira, and then um, that was it. So that's five, 10. So I think that's 11 promotions. It's ridiculous. Like, Neil Wontos got eight in England. This guy's managed 11 in a career, about about a 30-year managerial career. It's ridiculous. So that was basically the inspiration behind this series. It's just trying to see how many promotions we can get. So we're now on the security screen. We've got some national jobs, which I'm not interested in those right now. But a few teams with um, managers with a very insecure status. Uh, you've got one in Varbergs in the Swedish first division. So that might uh, free itself up. Uh, and you've got... FC Honka is in a Finnish Premier League though, so we can't be going there. But I'd love to manage them if they went down. FC Honka would be a great name. But um, that that's job in Sweden could free up. But um, we're just going to go maybe a, a couple of weeks or so, see if we can delay the offers we've already got and try and add some more in there. Because of those ones there at the moment, they're all predicted to finish like around mid-table. I think there's one or two which we're probably expected to get like a playoff, but not a great deal. So we've got a team here called Trial who are expected to challenge for the first league. I think this is Serbia. It is Serbia. So this could be a, a possibility. Like they've got a, a, a decent chance of actually getting a promotion. I think their prediction was fourth, was it? No, it was seventh. But they're expected to challenge for the title. That's what the bosses want from us. So that could definitely be a possibility. Um, and you've got these guys are predicted to finish mid-table. So again, we'll try and delay them. And they've allowed that, so that's good. But yeah, we're just going to see what else we can get. Try and get some maybe some better job offers. Because at the moment, we're getting them from everyone. We're getting interviews with top division sides. So that's at least good. But um, we'll see what comes up. So I'm going to end it here. And then the next time I see you, we will hopefully have a job. Falkirk could be a good place to start. And then we could end up staying in Scotland for the whole time with that one. Like some Scottish shames are doing well at the moment. You had Loki Doki with his Fort William. Bobby G's got a save with twat. So Scottish saves seem to be quite popular at the moment, which is strange. So yeah, um, that's going to do it for today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, drop a like down below. If you like the sound of this, then again, leave it a like so I know that you're looking forward to what's happening. But you can see some more jobs coming up there, some insecure jobs. Some of them are in top tier size, but some of them we can hopefully go for. Um, leave comments. Um, which of the sides that you send do you think we should take charge of? There's people out there that probably know more than I do about some of these. There might even be some supporters of some of these teams. Who knows? I don't know what sort of nationalities my audience is. I'm assuming they're mostly English, but I've actually no idea. I haven't looked at the analytics for that for a long time. But yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it. If you haven't done so already, or if you're new, do consider subscribing and turning on notifications. And we will be hopefully with a club in the next video, which um, I stream will be thursday i'm not quite sure it might be wednesday though um, i'm only putting this out a day early because we're going to harry potter studios on the tuesday so that's why this is out on monday and um, we've got some more offers oh this is it's been a week so these guys are asking for asking for a decision but we're going to try and delay them all again but yeah this is going to be something very interesting for me like i said never done anything like this before it's a very different save to anything i've ever done so i'm excited to, t to sort of take charge of it hopefully i will enjoy it i don't want to be not getting into it and up sort of cutting it short after a few years i want to try and keep this going to the end of the fm20 cycle and it may be an ongoing like thing i might do this again next year and maybe stay in england or something it's definitely something that could be like a long-term series on the channel that we bring back every year or maybe move it to twitch or something like that it's something that i think has got legs if it's something that people enjoy and it's something that i'll enjoy so uh, i'm looking forward to it but that is going to do it for today's video thank you for watching and i will see you soon goodbye